My Emily is the cutest in the venue, isn't she? Daniel said with a laugh, addressing Emily. Even though I'm right in front of them, this is how they treat me. It seems nothing but a joke to me. Then Emily, seeing me, burst out laughing. What? Your wife is ugly. That's it, I can't take it anymore. I'm calling off the marriage. I said that straight to Daniel. My name is Addison. I'm turning 29 this year. I've always loved numbers, and now I work in general affairs. I think this job suits my serious nature. Currently, I'm intensely studying for a qualification. The man I was supposed to marry is named Daniel. I met Daniel at a party. I had never been in a relationship with a man before. I lacked confidence and couldn't initiate conversations with men. As my friends began marrying off, I started attending parties in a rush. That's when I got accustomed to parties and met Daniel. My first impression of Daniel was that he was cool and refreshing. When we talked at the party, I enjoyed conversing with him a lot. Daniel, an elite at a major pharmaceutical company, is the same age as me. Even his academic background is impeccable. Yet, he's unpretentious and always brings up fun topics. I mistook his familiarity with women as just an act at first. Eventually, we became a couple. I was surprised that I could become a couple with him. I thought I had used up all my luck and love for being chosen by such a wonderful person. When we became a couple, he smiled at me and said, I'm so glad you chose me. I'm such a lucky guy. But really, I was the one chosen by him. So I said, I'm super happy too. But why did you choose me? I asked him. I was genuinely insecure about being a match for someone as great as him. But he just laughed and replied. I like girls who aren't experienced with guys and seem pure. You're my ideal. Then that's great. Looking forward to being with you. I said, smiling back at him. After that, he regularly asked me out on dates. On our third date, he confessed, and we started dating. Half a year later, he proposed. I liked him, so I immediately said yes. That's great. Let's be happy together. He said with a smile. Living for 29 years, I had finally grasped happiness. I would become even happier after getting married. I believed so. But my expectations crumbled to nothing. Because after we got engaged and started living together, he changed. While dating. Addison, you're really cute. My princess. He always praised me with a smile. But now, that's a thing of the past. Lately, he's always belittling me. For instance, the day after we started living together. I got up earlier than him that day and started preparing breakfast. I planned to do my makeup before leaving for work, so I was cooking without it. When breakfast was ready and set on the table, he woke up. I called out to him with a smile. Good morning, Daniel. Breakfast is ready, let's eat together. Then he, seeing me, yelled in surprise. What an awful face you have. A woman without makeup in the morning isn't a woman. At least make yourself presentable. He shouted, furrowing his brow. His eyes were like those looking at something filthy. In a panic, I retorted. I was going to do my makeup later. Isn't that too harsh? You used to call me cute before we got engaged. I was shocked by his words. But he just laughed and added insult to injury. It was just flattery to get married. Honestly, any woman with a decent income who'd do as I say would have been fine. He said, laughing. That's. I was so shocked that I dropped my fork. At that point, I wondered if I should really marry him, but we had already paid a deposit for the wedding venue. Besides, there was no guarantee of finding another partner if I let him go. I had no romantic prospects before meeting him. And maybe, just maybe, he might return to his kinder self. Holding on to that faint hope, I had no choice but to endure his harsh words. His behavior and words became increasingly unbearable. Especially concerning finances. He stopped contributing to our previously split living expenses. 
Could you please contribute to the living expenses? It's tough for me to cover everything with my salary alone. I pleaded with him on a day off. But he half-heartedly dismissed me. The wedding costs a lot, right? I'm broke from that expense, so you could at least pay the living expenses. However, he wasn't bearing the full cost of the wedding. There would be gift money, and his share of expenses should be less. No matter how I tried to convince him, he wouldn't listen. Moreover, he never helped with wedding preparations, even when I discussed the dress fittings. Even when I consulted about a dress meeting. Why do I care about a dress? It's a woman's thing, right? You just decide whatever. That's how he responded. And there were issues with his friends too. He seemed to have many friends, as his mobile phone frequently rang. Often, calls were from women I didn't know. When I questioned him, suspecting infidelity. They're just friends. Jealousy is unattractive. He dismissed it entirely. Unable to ask more, I was left in the dark until one night I overheard something shocking. It was when I woke up in the middle of the night. I usually slept with him in the bedroom, but that night, thirsty and awake, I noticed he wasn't there. I heard voices from the living room. He was on the phone. Daniel? I was about to open the door to the living room, but his words stopped me. Our apartment walls are thin. So conversations are usually audible. I wished I had married Emily. He said, laughing. And Emily's voice, loud enough through the phone, responded. But you'll quit your job someday, right? I want someone who can really provide. She laughed. Her voice was unbearably annoying. It was clear she was flirting with Daniel and aware of his attraction. But Daniel continued the call unfazed. It was really great when I was dating you. You're so cute. Should we get back together? Emily burst into laughter at his suggestion. That would be sad for your fiancé, wouldn't it? Though I'm definitely cuter. She laughed. Daniel continued to badmouth me with ease. I shed a tear at his cruelty. And whispered quietly, so as not to be heard in the next room. Daniel, you never really loved me. I thought I could finally be happy. I cried, stifling my voice so he wouldn't notice. Unaware of me, they continued their sweet conversation. Their phone call was hellish for me to overhear. Why did I rush into this marriage? I muttered, crying. He was definitely cheating, and it seemed unlikely he'd return to the kind man he was before we lived together. But the wedding was only a week away. What should I do? I could only despair about the future. Then came the wedding day. Daniel and I were preparing in the dressing room. Our families had already entered the ceremony hall, leaving us alone. Just waiting for the attendant to arrive, we heard a knock. Come in, please. I invited them in, thinking it was the attendant. However, the person who entered the dressing room wasn't the attendant, but a woman in a pink dress. Excuse me. I froze at that familiar voice. It was the woman on the phone with Daniel that night. I instinctively knew it. As I stood there, stunned, Daniel spoke in an excited tone. Ah, if it isn't Emily. You made it here without getting lost. He said, patting Emily's head. Uh. I was baffled by his words and actions, and she looked at him and happily responded. Daniel gave me the room number. But is this woman your marriage partner? She laughed, looking at me. Yeah, that's right. Oh, really? Such a plain dress for the main character of the day. It's quite dull. She critically eyed my dress from top to bottom. Irritated by her assertive words. I replied. This is the dressing room. The attendant will be here soon, so could you please leave now? I said to her in a stern tone. Then she quickly hid behind Daniel. No way, jealousy? This woman is glaring at me, it's really scary. Daniel, help me. She feigned fear. Addison, jealousy is unbecoming. She's an important person to me, don't be mean. He admonished me. He couldn't see her face behind his back, but she was smirking at me. 
her flashy makeup and perfectly styled hair were apparent. She was probably around the same age as me. She spoke with a triumphant look at me. Daniel really should have married me instead. You'll get bored of such a plain woman in three days, won't you? She laughed. Indeed. I wouldn't choose a woman like this unless she had a decent income. She's not my type. He said, looking down on me. I remained silent on purpose. I thought I'd let them talk as they pleased for a bit longer. I clenched the hem of my dress. I really wanted to marry you. Even if we can't be a real couple, you will always be the wife of my heart. Daniel, even if you're married, we'll always be together, right? Such an ugly woman is just for the money. She laughed brightly. That's right. We'll always be together. I'll quit my job and live off Addison's money with you. He made an outrageous proposal to her. At that moment, I was on the verge of exploding. What did these two think of me? But they were oblivious to my anger. Daniel, you're terrible to your wife. Are you proposing that because I'm cuter? She asked him with upturned eyes. He nodded as if it were obvious. My Emily is the cutest in the venue, right? What do you think of Addison's face, Emily? Daniel asked with a sarcastic smile, turning to Emily. Despite my presence, this was how they treated me. It seemed nothing but a joke to me. Then Emily, seeing me, burst out laughing. What? Your wife is ugly. And she continued. Poor Daniel, marrying such an ugly woman. I'll soothe you as your heart's wife. She said, looking down on me with a laugh. That's right, isn't it? Daniel laughed too. That's it, I can't take it anymore. I'm calling off the marriage. I said that straight to Daniel. He, not taking me seriously. Really? If you cancel the marriage with me, you'll stay single forever. Because you're an unfixable ugly woman. He started laughing. Emily too. Daniel, you're too honest. I'm laughing so hard, my stomach hurts. She clutched her stomach, laughing uproariously. After laughing, Daniel said. A woman like you should be grateful to get married. You'll support me with your money for life. I felt a deep rage boiling inside me. Frustrated at myself for not seeing through such a person before the wedding. I clenched my fists, trying to endure. Emily, still laughing. Well, the wedding ceremony is about to start, right? I have to go eat my share of the celebration money, so I'll head to the venue first. She said and left the room. Shortly after, the attendant arrived. Seemingly unaware of the conversation in the dressing room, the attendant began preparations, congratulating us. Then the attendant started explaining the wedding. Daniel and I had chosen a restaurant wedding, starting with the reception. According to the attendant, we just had to follow the MC's lead. I listened quietly to the attendant's explanation. Daniel spoke to me nonchalantly. Once the wedding is over and we're officially married, we'll be husband and wife. Your looks are a letdown, but I'll put up with it. After all, I have Emily. I ignored his comment. I had no intention of listening to him anymore. I was done with this man. Daniel persisted. Hey! Answer me! But I continued to ignore him. All that was left was to exact revenge and denounce him and his actions. I felt a sense of mission burning within me. Then Daniel and I entered the wedding venue. The unsuspecting attendees gave us a generous round of applause. Of course, among them was Emily, smirking unpleasantly. We sat down, and the MC proceeded with the ceremony. Let's start with the vows. First, the groom, Daniel. Amidst thunderous applause, Daniel began speaking. I am overjoyed to marry Addison. I vow to love only her for the rest of my life. He looked at me with a smug face. All lies. Inside, I looked at him with a cold detachment. Amidst the applause, the MC continued. Thank you. Now, a response from the bride, Addison, please. I ignored the MC and remained silent. 
a murmur started spreading through the venue. My parents and friends looked worried. Addison? Could we have your response, please? The MC tried to proceed, albeit confused. Still, I remained silent. The venue became more unsettled. Everyone looked at me with concern. Impatient. Addison, why are you silent? Just say something. Daniel harshly said. But I kept quiet. The atmosphere in the venue turned decidedly strange. The in-laws looked at me with puzzled expressions. Enough was enough. I had gathered enough attention. I thought so and opened my mouth. Glancing sideways, I saw Daniel relieved that I was finally going to speak. I confirmed his face and momentarily smirked. It was too early for him to feel relieved. Then I began speaking. I will not vow to love Daniel. I'm breaking up with him right now. What? Daniel was stunned, and I casually played the voice recorder at maximum volume. Daniel and Emily's conversation filled the room. I really wanted to marry Emily. Even if we can't be a real couple, Emily is the wife of my heart. Daniel, we'll always be together even if you're married, right? Such an ugly woman is just for the money. The conversation from the dressing room earlier echoed through the venue. Previously, when Daniel was on the phone with Emily at night. I felt frustrated for not having proof of infidelity. So, I bought a voice recorder. I always carried it with me, and fortunately. I managed to record their conversation today. The crowd became even more agitated. My friends looked at Daniel with suspicion. My dad seemed ready to get up and punch Daniel. Held back only by my mom. My mother-in-law looked like she might faint, and father-in-law John hurriedly supported her. Emily, sitting at a table with friends, was being glared at by those around her. She was sweating profusely and looked extremely uncomfortable. Meanwhile, the recording continued to play. In this chaotic situation, Daniel, confused, shouted. Addison, what are you doing? Stop that voice recorder right now. He tried to grab the recorder from me, but I swiftly dodged him. Then I shouted loudly. There's no way I'll stop it. Everyone needs to know that Daniel is cheating with Emily over there. I glared at Daniel. Unable to hold back anymore, Emily shouted from her table. You're so sneaky. Just because you get to be Daniel's wife. The one Daniel truly cares about is cute me. However, Emily's outburst caused the venue to buzz with a different energy, whispering among themselves. Everyone, regardless of age or gender. Seeing this, Emily began to panic. What's going on, everyone? What's the matter? I calmly told her. Emily, sorry to interrupt your confident speech, but I think you're the ugliest person in this venue. Someone laughed out loud. Immediately, her face turned bright red. What? What are you talking about? Daniel told me I'm the cutest, you know? Maybe you're the one with bad eyesight? She retorted sharply at me. Laughter began to leak from the audience. Emily and Daniel started to look confused. Then one of Daniel's friends burst out laughing and shouted. Daniel, you got terrible taste in women. Liking a girl with a face like a panda. And her body's like a panda too. Following this comment from Daniel's friend, the whole venue erupted into laughter. What? Aren't you being rude? Emily yelled at Daniel's friend, but her voice was drowned out by the laughter. Yes, she did look like a panda. First, her makeup heavily lined around the eyes. With her small eyes, she really resembled a panda. And her body was full-figured, making her pink dress seem tight. Her upper arms jiggled violently with every movement. I was worried her pink dress might rip at any moment. The moment I saw her in the dressing room, I realized Daniel's taste was too peculiar. It made sense why he would call me ugly. I borrowed a microphone from the MC. She called me ugly in the dressing room, but I wasn't upset at all. After all, she is a panda. It's amusing to be insulted by a zoo animal, isn't it? 
As I spoke clearly, laughter erupted from various parts of the venue. Her face turned beet red with frustration. So frustrating! She stamped her feet in anger. Daniel glared at me. I sighed heavily at the two of them. People who cheat have no right to glare at me. Daniel and Emily remained silent, hit by the truth. Then I addressed the silent couple. I'll be sure to collect the engagement breakup fee from both of you. They immediately became defensive upon hearing about the fee. Why should we pay a breakup fee when we aren't even registered as married? I absolutely won't pay. I won't either. I'm a freelancer, I don't have that kind of money. Emily exclaimed. The crowd looked on in disbelief at their comments. Some even chuckled at their ridiculousness. Then a person stood up and approached us. Daniel, enough is enough. Daniel's boss, with a red face, yelled. Boss! This is, uh... Daniel, looking perplexed, tried to make an excuse to his boss. But he seemed at a loss for words and remained confused. The boss sighed heavily at his demeanor. What an irreparable thing you've done. Cheating openly in front of Addison, maybe it's my fault for not educating you properly. The boss said, holding his head. His face turning pale. He seemed to be trembling slightly. Emily, looking puzzled, said. That ugly woman is from a different company than Daniel, right? Why is Daniel's boss so worried about it? She asked, tilting her head. Sensing something off from the boss's reaction, Daniel asked. Boss, what's wrong? My engagement breakup with Addison has nothing to do with you, right? He asked nonchalantly. Then the boss, face red with anger, shouted. Don't you know our company's board of directors? Don't you recognize Addison's dad? He yelled desperately. Daniel looked back and forth between the boss and my dad. No way! He muttered. His face turned pale. My dad's face was red with rage, veins popping. I am a director at your company. Your future will be discussed at the board meeting. Daniel was shocked. He tried to appease my dad in a panic. Wait, please! It's too much for this incident to lead to that. Daniel's friends were also surprised. They were all his colleagues, so bewildered by this turn of events. It's natural to be confused when the bride's dad is a director at your own company. Then my dad said calmly. Weren't you planning to quit the company and live off my daughter? You just played it on the voice recorder. If you're so eager to leave the company, why don't you do it now? That's. Daniel's face was filled with despair. And with dad's words, Daniel's mother finally fainted. His father, John, was frantically calling her name. For her, Daniel was probably the pride and joy of the family. A well-educated graduate working in a major corporation. He must have been on a seemingly perfect elite path. But now, this incident not only derailed his elite trajectory but also cast his future into uncertainty. I had only met the in-laws once at a greeting. But they seemed like very nice and sensible people. That's why this incident must have been incredibly hard for her to accept. Daniel looked terribly bewildered by his mother fainting. And then, incredibly, Daniel yelled at me. If you had told me your dad was a director at our company, I would have treated you better. He accused me, completely disregarding his own actions. He seems to be pretending that nothing happened to him. That was the last straw for me. Daniel blaming me in such a situation. I didn't care what happened to him anymore. I asked Daniel with a smile. Treat me better? Like contributing to our living expenses during cohabitation? Or not contributing money but at least staying out of housework? That's... He faltered. I exposed to everyone that Daniel didn't contribute to living expenses and yet interfered in household matters. Daniel was now subjected to even more disdainful looks from the crowd. Especially the women there didn't seem to see him as a human anymore. Maybe they thought even a weed would be better than him. Even Emily said to him. Daniel, you didn't pay any living expenses at all? That's really bad, isn't it? 
he, realizing the gravity of the situation, turned even paler. I smiled at him. Good for you, Daniel. You wanted to quit your job, right? You'll probably be able to quit very soon. He looked around. Dad, glaring at him in rage. Friends looking at him with disdain. Emily, a bit in disbelief. Not a single person was on his side. In such a situation, most people couldn't stand it. Then he began to tremble and clung to me. Addison, I was wrong. Please don't call off the engagement. I don't want to quit my job. He apologized profusely. Sweat on his forehead. It was too late for apologies. I looked at him with cold eyes. It's over, Daniel. After being looked down upon like this, there's no going back. Just stop it. But. He looked like he was about to cry. I added the final blow. Freelancer Emily and soon-to-be unemployed Daniel, a perfect match. Emily turned pale as well. If she were burdened with an unemployed Daniel, they would both be in trouble. Quickly, Emily distanced herself from Daniel. And then, Daniel collapsed, his knees giving way. Don't ever show up in front of me again. I left the two of them behind and exited the venue in my wedding dress. Eventually, he left the company. The company's decision was a demotion in the guise of a department transfer. A department where his main job was sorting documents. However, many company associates had witnessed his debacle at the wedding. Leading them was our dad, a director of the company. The smart ones started keeping their distance from Daniel, and it seems he was secretly condemned by many. Consequently, he found it increasingly difficult to stay at the company. Eventually, unable to bear it, he submitted his resignation before the transfer. But leaving the company brought him further trials. It was the hefty breakup fee. The engagement breakup fee was just the going rate, not too high. But we added the wedding costs on top of it. Since the wedding turned out that way, we had to return the congratulatory money to all the guests. But the food was served, and the full cost of the wedding had to be paid. He was responsible for the disruption of the wedding, so it was decided that he would bear the cost. Daniel's parents, who were very nice people, apologized to me several times. I felt almost sorry for them. Daniel had no savings. He was flashy with money and spent whatever he had. Therefore, his parents initially shouldered the guarantee money. However, in the discussion, if I marry Addison, I don't have to pay, right? Then I'll register the marriage. Daniel argued. I felt nothing but contempt for him. And for saying that, he was severely scolded by his father, John. Eventually, an infuriated John said, You're hopeless. I'm done with you. Daniel was visibly panicked. With no job and no home, Daniel was in a dire situation. Naturally, the apartment where Daniel and I had been living was already in the process of being vacated. I think he has to leave by the end of this month. I had already arranged movers and sent my belongings to my parents' house, leaving the apartment. After that, he kept ignoring the landlord's eviction notices. Eventually, he was sued. I found out about this because the landlord contacted me. Apparently, he had stayed there for about three months without paying rent. He was forcibly evicted through legal proceedings. It's unlikely that he who now disowned by his parents could return to his parents' home. Jobless and homeless, his future looked bleak. I think he has hit rock bottom. And he hasn't rebuilt anything with Emily. Through a lawyer, I demanded the guarantee money from her. I offered a condition, if she didn't reconcile with Daniel, the fee would be reduced. Without hesitation, she chose not to reconcile. I'm not interested in someone without money or a home. She declared firmly. Apparently, Daniel reached out to her several times for help, but she ignored all his attempts. She apologized to me. I'm really sorry. Since that wedding, everyone calls me a panda. It's been tough. I think the guests spread the word. She seemed to have realized her mistakes and reflected on her actions. But no matter her remorse, she faced constant criticism. Even at her part-time job, 
The panda nickname got out and she quit, being laughed at behind her back. I'm thinking of moving far away. She said. She, forced to flee due to her careless comments with Daniel. She will likely continue to be cautious about public scrutiny. A fitting punishment for her disdainful behavior. I hope she learns from this. As for me, I passed my certification exam. The qualification is for a social insurance labor consultant. Working in general affairs, dealing with payroll and entry-slash-exit procedures, I wanted to be more knowledgeable about labor management. This will surely motivate me more in my work. Not just in work, but I've also taken a step forward in romance. After the wedding, my friends started introducing me to men, knowing I was done with parties. I was grateful for their kindness. There's one man, introduced by a friend, with whom I've become close. He's three years older, hardworking, and not very handsome. Rather plain looking. He works office administration in a small to medium enterprise, nothing glamorous. After Daniel, elite and good-looking men trigger a rejection in me. So, this man feels like someone I can be myself with. It's still early to tell how it will go. But it's a step forward. I want to cherish this one step forward for the future.